Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about the SPLC that is called High Performance Liquid Chromatography. So before understanding the high performance liquid chromatography, so you can see this is a liquid chromatography. So this is a manual column I am doing and using liquid as a mobile phase. And here is the compound. All of us organic chemists know what is liquid chromatography or column chromatography. So here I am doing the column chromatography. That is, uh, that is called liquid chromatography. But if we add something else with this kind of system to make high performance, that in that case it will be HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography. So how we can add um, extra thing to make this high performance liquid chromatography. So here um, I can show you the uh, unit here. So this is a HPLC and this HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography because it has a pump in it. So basically there are two pump here and that pump will take the solvent from this solvent container and it will make a mix according to your um, gradient uh, like if you make the gradient i will explain what is gradient and what is isocratic so this pump will take this solvent and it will go through this line like injector so your sample will be injected here and once it is injected so that line that line is going to this column with the guard column that is guard column to protect the column and that goes to this column and after get separated through the column then it will go to the real part that is called like detector detector is the eye of the HPLC I means like it can detect or it can see whether which compound is going so based on that this HPLC setup is like not analytical it is like semi preparative HPLC so that's why based on that um, peak uh, with the detector then this this robotic system can collect your peaks in separated test tube but in case of analytical instrument analytical HPLC there will not be any collector so in case of analytical instru instrument detector will detect and that will give you a certain peak level and that can be measured by the computer and then you can con you can calculate the concentration of your sample or analyte I'll show how to calculate that part so this is a basically one HPLC system but HPLC system depends on the vendor this is from the Gilson depends on the vendor the system can be like infrastructure can be different but basic principle of the HPLC is almost the same so you will have the solvent container it will go through the pump pump will mix your solvent according to your software how you are giving like how what is the proportion of the solvent should mix it will mix in the pump station and then that from that pump it will that line will go to the injector loop so here the injector loop is open in many SPLC system that is called a column injector sorry the sample injector compartment that there is like kind of another box but uh, that is in uh, that is for the analytical mostly uh, for analytical instrument so injector port uh, after injector port so sample will be injected there and that will go with the flow of the solvent from the pump and your sample it will go to through the column and that column will uh, uh, send it to the detector detector will detect and you can see which one is your product so uh, based on like some internal standard or many other things you can do or detect your product and you can compare or you can calculate or cons uh, you can find out the amount of your product so uh, let's go to the board i can explain the basic diagram here about the splc so on the splc um first thing on the top you will see the container with the solvent so there are many solvent container with the tubing you will see some tubing is going maximum time you'll see a and b so those are like solvent and there will be and with the filter so like this 
uh, solvent content uh, like it will solvent tray we can say it is a solvent tray having a and b normally a is water b is organic solvent methanol or acetonitrile but sometimes you can uh, reverse like b is the organic uh, water and a is the organic solvent so whatever it is then these two being normally go to an unit for a real uh, good um, analytical HPLC so that is called DGU degasser unit degasser unit means if your solvent has some bubble or gas or something so it will go through this degasser unit uh, to uh, re remove the gas or bubbles and after that this thing will go to the pump so normally in the pump section there are two dual pump system or like one pump system so what this one pump or two pump do so actually it will go uh, two line will go to different pump and uh, then um, it will get um, it will get one port here to uh, control the mixture and based on like how much uh, solvent you want to put after certain time so let's talk about the gradient and isocratic system then you will understand like what I am going uh, what I am talking about so so um, suppose you want to run a sample and uh, you this is the time you want to run and this is the uh, solvent composition so um, initially normally the SPLC run like 2% uh, organic solvent and then you can start like okay 0 to 1 minute 2% and then it will start to 5% so this is like percent solvent suppose organic solvent B so uh five percent and it increasing and you can say okay from one to five it will go to the like um suppose uh two percent it is like maybe twenty percent something like this so twenty percent and then after twenty percent then um you can say okay this is um uh, like five minute and maybe you can say in ten minute it will go to the um five to ten it will go to like 70 percent or something so since you are seeing that that organic solvent is increasing and after that you can uh, you can run the uh, analysis like 30 minutes or 40 minutes sometimes like this so you can uh, stepwise you can increase the solvent so if the increase and you can go up to 96 percent normally 94 percent 95 percent or sometimes 98 percent but normally people do 94 percent or like 95 percent and then directly goes down to two percent again so this whole scenario is called gradient of the solvent suppose you are adding a is a water and b is a methanol uh a spill cigarette water a spill cigarette methanol and if you make a program with the software like okay first zero to one minute two percent and one to five minute it will go to like twenty percent and then slowly like thirty percent forty percent seventy percent ninety percent ninety six percent or whatever so this stepwise gradually stepwise the solvent ratio is called the gradient now this part this gradient if you make this program in your software then that part will be controlled by these two pump and this mixture so this pump will give you such way so that always this gradient can be followed uh, in this mixture port so once this mixture port is done, like mixed here then it will start running the solvent and it will go another compartment now if you don't want to increase any organic solvent immediately and you want to run like directly in initially directly like 10 percent always like 10 percent b solvent and the remaining percent is water like always constant 10 percent that is called isocratic system isocratic solvent system that means you are not changing <clears throat> the organic solvent concentration gradually no gradient this is called isocratic okay now 
once that solvent mixed either the isocratic or the gradient then it will go to your auto sampler that is called auto sampler so auto sampler is like a port okay um it's like you can imagine it's like a flow of a river so this river water is going through okay uh going through this uh a certain direction now in auto sampler if you give the sample if you introduce the sample here uh, with the injector somehow then that sample will join in this flow okay like uh, literally suppose you are standing in a um, edge of a river and you throw a stone like not a stone something like colorful something and with the flow that color is moving so in HPLC that after mixing this from this gradient chamber or like mixture chamber the flow will go through this uh, through a certain port in the um, auto sampler that auto sam uh, your auto sampler will take uh, in like certain suppose you put the uh, sample in a vial so auto sampler uh, has an injector or something that vial will go here and it will take automatically the sample and inject here and ultimately that injection normally adding that sample in the flow of the river or like flow of this mobile face in the auto sampler okay so that auto sampler once it crossed then it will go another compartment uh, that is called so this compartment we can say auto sampler auto sampler now it will go to another compartment that is we can say column oven because in advanced spilc they have the column oven because that oven con can control the temperature normally sometimes in some analysis you need to run the term um, sample like 0 to 4 degree 0 to 20 degree or like at 40 degrees something like this so that, that's why the column oven having column oven is a good one because you can control the temperature in the column so that line now um will go to a column as you saw that column outside in our system that is the semi prep but it is the another so that column oven so you know the column chemistry already the uh, like every organic chemist know the column uh, has a certain material inside this that is called column pack okay so normal in normal column we do the silica gel but in this SPLC column we normally used reverse phase silica material reverse phase means normally silica has OH group in the outside but in case of uh, SPLC column to make it reverse phase that oxy uh, that hydroxyl group is capped with the like long chain like C18 chain like all of the um, all of the silica that OH like added the group like uh, alkyl chain group C18 group so along with all C18 group that uh, column is packed with the C18 that is like called reverse phase uh, stationary phase so in that case since it is like mostly alkyl chain so it become more non-polar so in that case if you add uh, more polar compounds so more polar compound will come first because uh, polar compound cannot be retained by this chain uh, but if you have some non-polar compounds a non-polar compound will come later like non-polar co compound could be staying a little bit here while the polar compound will be running so fast so that's the uh, basic uh, principle for the reverse phase column so that's why once this uh, your sample is go through this mixture of the solvent and it go enter to the column so if you have suppose a, a little bit non-polar compound and a polar compound so it will go out and then it will enter another compartment that is called detector so once it go to the detector and um, detector will detect like which one is coming first and which one is going next so according to the detector it will show in the computer so wh when injection is done so, uh, that will start running sometimes and then 
the once your first compound is coming then it will show a peak like this and from this peak mid and from the injection time that time is called retention time that means that compound how how long it was retained okay so more polar compound retention time will be smaller and more non-polar compound that will take time more time to come out so that's why you will see another peak long time back so that retention time is bigger than the first retention time so that uh, so it you can say this is a, re a second retention time for the second compound so that's how detector will detect um, and once it is detected and from the software and computer you can uh, measure the peak height versus peak area also okay so, so from this so you can calculate the peak area so that is important for the calculation of the amount of your sample or analyte in the uh, re real sample when you are injecting so from the beginning if we want to see the total thing HPLC always have a solvent container like those are solvent and there are some small filter in the solvent container and A and B that will go to the TG UT gasser unit and once that degassed then it will go to the pump compartment the normally maximum HPLC has two pump and with the two line and there is a mixture or something chamber so mixing chamber so that in that mixing chamber those solvent will be mixed and according to your gradient direction or like isocratic direction that uh, two pump will help to mix that gradient to increase slowly the organic solvent or like to decrease slowly the aqueous solvent and it will go through the auto sampler chamber and there the injector will inject the sample in the flow of that uh, flow of that solvent and then once it is done then it will go through and always pump will start pressurizing to move forward the solvent and it will go to the column and that co through this column your analyte will be separated based on their affinity with this reverse phase uh, column pack material so once it gets separated then it will go to the detector level and that detector will detect it based on like how uh, detector will know like when it is injected and when it is coming out so total based on that time you can see the retention time for the first compound and retention time for the second compound and you can also calculate the area and based on that area you can calculate the concentration or amount of the analyte in your like in analyte of interest in your sample or mixture or like something um in your uh, original sample so i hope this um explanation will help to understand the real uh, performance of the HPLC and as you as i showed you before like how the HPLC looks like different vendor has different HPLC setup so here this is from the gilson and uh, it has a solvent system and it will go normally two line through these two line and it will go to the pump and that pump normally will mix up this in the mix, mix, mixing container and then um, after mixing that then with the port it will go to this line and it is going to this injector so uh, this is the injector port and once it is injected and it will go to the mix with these different uh, line so we don't need to know a lot of those things and uh, just remember like after injecting then it will go to this column direction and that column will go like guard column to protect this column and it will go to the column and after separation it will go to the detector and once the things are detected then it will be collected with this auto sampler and the software normally is stay in this computer not so based on your vendor uh, the software interface will be different so you when you're getting the training basic training definitely you need to know how the software looks like and how it will uh, work and what are the parameters you need to check or change so this is one kind of uh, SPLC now I'm going to show you another kind of SPLC that is also the same like you have the solvent system you have the um, pump system mixing system and auto sampler that has auto sampler that is kind of analytical SPLC so uh, actually that that is more advanced um, so that uh, auto sampler will take the sample uh, inject it and it will pass through the column separate it and after separation it will uh, go through the detector and then that will be sent to a 
MS system, like mass spectroscopic system. So in case of like a small amount of the sample, if you want to just detect whether you have this compound like qualitative test, not quantitative test. So uh, whatever the machine I'm going to show you now, that machine normally do the qualitative test. That means we can detect, yes, presence of compound or not. So normally for the reaction check, we normally check that. But there is another system of the LCMS system, which we can, with, the, with one, we can determine how much analyte was there. That is more sophisticated and you have to follow a strict procedure and protocol. In another video, I'll give that uh, explanation uh, or like I will try to show how to do that. But now just let's see the another SPLC system, including MS, just for the qualitative test. So here is the video. So this is the another HPLC here, um, Azilent technology. So here is here are the solvent bottles, solvent A 0.1% formic acid, uh, and this is solvent B 0.1% formic acid in methanol, and that is methanol to wash the syringe and other part. So basically, these solvents are useful, water and uh, methanol or water and acetonitrile. So that is another bottle like 0.1 percent uh, formic acid with the acetonitrile. So these tubings goes to directly to the um, pump through degasser unit. So this is the pump and there are two pump inside. You can see there are two different pump and that diagram is showing the mixture point like where if you use the uh, gradient for the solvent so those two pump those two tubing will go to this joint um, uh, then it will um, mix here after uh, according to the gradient and you you see the diagram how uh, it is going where the line so after the pump the solvent flow go to the auto sampler this is the auto sampler you can see the tray and there is a uh, a small robot here that will normally take out see uh, this is the robot it will take out the vial from the rake to this place like uh, near to this red wire and so this is the the white thing inside so that is the injector port so you can see the diagram one line come from the pump and then number two uh, it goes through the mixture and then in the port and once it goes uh, to the auto sampler then it goes uh, through the column and after getting separated it goes to the detector so once this detector detected the compound and then the red line the blue uh, the green one is in inlet and red line is outlet outlet goes to the directly uh, from um, the column after getting separated to the mass system <clears throat> so here the ESIMS is connected with this uh, LCMS um, so that after getting separated it goes to the that um, electronic spray ionization so you see the excellent uh, machine here so it will uh, generate the ion which is um, detected by the mass spectroscopy and you can see in the um, computer so according to the let's see how to submit the sample here so there is a window submit sample and uh, your username and password and group id and uh, how many sample you are going to add here so you have to give all those information and once you give this information then um then you will see another window like what is the gradient you want to use what is the sample name or uh, what is the injection volume should be so those option will arise and so here i'm putting all the information um here so uh give next <laughs> then here the option here and on the top like you can put the sample name and um the sample sample priority is normal and sample name whatever the name you want to put and sample injection volume and you can put more description in the sample name so whatever you write you will see in your final data and which gradient mode you want to there are three gradient uh, pre-made three three minute gradient and four minute gradient 
not three actually two so and uh, for this injection volume will be three microliter so you can run both of them three minute gradient or four minute gradient so if you check out this box then both will be run um, so uh, the maximum injection volume uh, for the four minute gradient is 15 microliter then give the next then you'll see the position where you will put your vial so this is uh, just next to the your HPLC so number one is green you can see number one and there are five options one two three four five and the bigger hole is w like waste so let's see here so it is just next to the uh, lc system so this is number one then number two number three number four number five and the bigger one is waste don't put your vial there because it will go to the waste container then so once you put your vial here and once you keep the submit then a little bit later you will see like the uh, so now if I click next or uh, submit then the sample will be taken by the robot to the injector port so here you can you see the method is already uh, determined but you can do also method development here like you can change the parameters whatever you want but normally this method is see you can see that this uh, robot is taking the vial from the outside now it is kept for a certain moment here once it is ready for the system so the vial is already taken by this robot so once it is taken uh, the system is ready now system is getting ready so it is showing not ready so once it get ready then that robot uh, in the auto sampler will take the vial near to this injector port where this diagram you see the diagram just behind this diagram so it will take that pile there and from there the injector will take a certain amount like certain volume 3 microliter or 15 microliter based on the method you are using so it will take that volume from there and then uh, it will go through the number two the mixing point and after that it will go to them so the pump number one uh, if you see the diagram the solvent is coming and it now you can see that the robot is taking this vial to this injector port so here is the injector port it will go there and from there the inject injector will take the volume um, the required volume once it is done then robot will take it this out the process is very short time uh, it doesn't take longer time so it will uh, be kept uh, in its original position right now So there are uh, many SPLC actually have this auto sampler has a certain temperature choose also you can uh, reduce the temperature minus four sorry four degrees Celsius and you can also go up to 45 degrees Celsius so injection is done it is showing the green injection done so now the run will be um, going like that sample is passing through the column so uh, once that sample passed through the column and whatever the and uh, whatever the things are present there everything will be detected um, through this so there are options like you see the lcms offline and online so online is running so you don't need to you can't see the data here but you can click this lcms offline so you can click on that and then um, by going that offline you can see your data once it is done so if you go there like file and you will give like load signal uh, in the file load signal so then it, it will show the directory where you want to go so here the data is in the data folder so data and go to your account name or like uh, group name so this interface can be a little bit different depends on like your um, the place where this machine is installed so here like it it shows the data under the data folder and the the name username and the date and then you can double click it and on the left side you will see the data so you can click the data double click it and then you will you can open it so here um the data whatever you uh, choose to open double click it and you will see this chromatogram the top chromatogram chromatograms are uv chromatogram which are like detected by the uv detector in the 
things like in the SPLC system but since it is connected with the LCMS so depend on that uh, LCMS data if you click on the chromatogram it will show the mass data also but before doing that you can do extract ions click that and uh, put the value the expected mass what we are looking for so normally uh, you can put insert so if you want to see like a couple of ions if you suspect maybe these or like after breaking down these will be showing like this so you can put more ion there like value then once it is done then click ok and uh, you can insert more also you can delete also so click ok then according to this extract ion method so it will show the chromatogram um, like these many peaks then you can individually click on those peaks and you can see the mass so here um there are lots of peaks are present because i was using the crude um to check like whether i have the product so there are lots of um, peaks so i normally check individual those peaks and you will see the mass number and if your product is there then depending on the uh, peak you can see your expected product there so by this way you can do your lcms um a test it is kind of qualitative test not quantification because it is just to check your reaction or just to check you have the product or not but lcms um, quantitation is more vigorous and research based and uh, the people need more information uh, and more techniques more validation many other parameters set up uh, standard operating procedure but uh, I'm not showing here that option but in future in my video maybe I will bring some LCMS analysis um, for those kind of analysis like drug related uh, analysis or like metabolite or many other quanti quantification so here um, there are lots of options like you can make uh, select the different uh, tab and you can see like what are the options like you can zoom the spectra you can click on the mass list you can see the spectrum many other things so uh, this is pretty much simple and this training doesn't require like too much of complication but for the uh, quantification lcms you really need a very good training um, protocol from the mass um mass analytical department so you will see that in my future video i will try to bring some lcms that quantification or like how to use uh, lcms to determine the uh, uh, drug quantity or metabolites after a certain period of time and how to calculate the half-life how to calculate the distribution uh, of distribution of volume how to calculate the clearance of the drug many other parameters can be done with the lcms this is a fast uh, rigorous method nowadays for those calculation parts so you can um, click on those specific peaks and you can see like what are the options and there are some options here you can go to the method or like you can change the method here i'm not going to change it but if you want to use different method then you can click method and you can do edit and you can change the method so here what are the auto sampler things temperature and what are the pump like what is the volume like how much volume per minute should go you can change column open what will be the temperature you can put the column open in the temperature and in the uh, the detector area like uh, what are the um, wavelength should be you can choose and you can make on off and finally it will go to this um, quadruple esi ms so it is now showing offline so you can change those part and to see the mass list and um, you can also do the verification qap oqp pv performance like operation qualification and mm, there are some other options also so those things can be done um, once you get the vigorous training on that part also but normally this instrument or this simple lcms is just for the detection of the um, identification or detection of your product or compound your expected product so here again i'm showing like how to extract the um, ion and once you see that 
then you can select on this so here in the online method like you see there's injection volume is three microliter uh, from the vial and uh, which solvent what is the gradient going one milliliter per minute and right now you already know the gradient what is gradient so here 60 percent a and 40 percent b is going and cd the solvent is not going there and the bar is that is the pressure 197.22 pressure and the column moment temperature is 40 degrees celsius you can see the column prep uh, all all those um information and the light um deuterium, deuterium light is there in the uh, uh detector so you can see the product information and all other things here and finally you can see <clears throat> uh on off button like if you want to make change anything but if you want to change anything in this method so you have to do change and you have to save it like save as a new method i hope this video will help you to understand the basic information about the spLC and the its structure and components so if you like this video please subscribe and bye now